Labour's, Labour's had their s second day of conference. They're currently on day four as we record this, but I've only caught up with the recordings because I have to watch the whole live stream. Otherwise, I don't feel like I'm doing my job. And uh, so that's been uh, another eight hours of hell. And uh, Sorry to hear that. We're going to enjoy. So first thing is to go around the conference. So some of the media interviews that were going on because we had cervix gate that didn't die. So this is, of course, the story that Rosie Duffield said, women have a cervix. And in response, the Labour Party is in a civil war about whether or not this is the case. And uh, we'll go with the, the first link here. So you can see Andrew Doyle making the, the post here of someone who went on, uh, what does this say, LBC to talk about it. And we're going to play this clip in which we're going to have the first part with Keir Starmer coming down on the side of women don't have cervixes. I'm not really sure. And uh, then this lady who kind of melts down and I, it's wonderful to watch. So let's enjoy. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? Well, it is uh, something that... Uh, shouldn't be said. It is not right. But Andrew, I don't think that... So Rosie Duffield should not have said that. Can you explain to people watching why she should not have said that? Well, Andrew, I don't think that um, we can just go through various things that people say. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nick, and it's great to talk to you. Good to have you I just think that this issue has just become so divisive and toxic and it pits people against each other, both groups who face discrimination in society, women and trans women. And I just find this debate incredibly unhelpful and, and, and unproductive, to be totally honest. Uh, at this conference, I want to speak about issues that affect people, whatever uh, their gender and, 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 and whatever their sexuality. we will get to those, I assure sexuality. you. But is it transphobic, yes or no? Look, I, 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 is it is it transphobic? It, I, look, I just I don't even know how to start answering these questions. I, I well, just don't find them. Painful. I just don't find them. So the party helpful. leader suggests it is. So, what what do you, as shadow chancellor, say? I think that people should be able to identify with the gender that they feel comfortable Respectfully, with. Respectfully, shadow chancellor, that wasn't my question. My question is: Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? It's, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Why is that? Because if if somebody, I'd look, I, 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 why are we having to discuss parts of women's anatomy? <laughs> because on, one of your on colleagues, video? because one of your colleagues feels unable to attend your conference, and she should feel safe attending our conference. But I don't feel comfortable talking about women's anatomies and different parts of women's bodies with you, uh, Nick, or, or frankly with anybody else. But if somebody identifies. As, as a woman and a man, or a man, they should be able to do so, whatever their body parts are. Collapses. I mean, utter collapse, as you can see. <laughs> Keir Starmer could at least give an answer to that, which is he took the unscientific response of saying that men also have cervixes. Uh, she couldn't at all. Uh, I think she's like, I can't remember what position she has in the party, but she's a senior uh, minister She's well. shadow chancellor. Yeah, so the, I love that though. She, you saw her calling for unity on this issue, like we shouldn't debate this issue, which is always a telltale sign when a socialist does that, because that means they're losing, and they know <laughs> it, as you could obviously see. But also she takes both positions at once, seemingly. So she says that she wouldn't say only women have a cervix is a transphobic phrase, but also people should be a able to identify as whatever they like. So... Mm, typical politician, useless, can't even take up a side. So then we'll go to the uh, the BBC. So the BBC decided to have this debate as well. And of course, being the BBC, they had two leftists on to agree with each other and then to move on. So we'll play this uh, next one. Uh, do you agree with Keir Starmer? It's something that shouldn't be said. It isn't right. Well, it's factually inaccurate. There are men who have cervixes. There are men who are trans and they're men. And so it's not, I mean, it's just factually wrong. Yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm joyful because finally someone has given what I consider an answer that is actually responding to the question. Yeah, and do you think people don't give? Uh, well, no, they don't. don't. They don't. And I think a lot of that is the fact that they don't really believe it themselves and they feel that they have to say it or their activists will scream at them. Emily's entirely right. There are people who don't self-define as women who nonetheless have female biology. But what's really important about that is to say that that's fine, but we do need to record gender and sex differently. There are times, if you want to have NHS records, and your NHS record says you're male, we still need a way to know that some of those people need to be invited for cervical smears. And so we have to, in law and policy, differentiate between sex and gender. And uh, you haven't. And she goes on to say that, well, the trans rights activists want us to think they're the same. What is the phrase, men have a cervix, if not exactly that point, that the gender and sex have been brought mm -hmm. into one being that there is no definition between these two things and uh, that's what leads people to say things like yes it's absolutely right that men have a cervix 
it's amazing to see people actually just come to the conclusion that two plus two does really equal five. Yeah, like, live on the BBC. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. But uh, there's one more from uh, Cervix Gate. I think we're going to enjoy. So this is the last one here. You can see Stephen posting here. This is uh, Talk Radio. So uh, Julia the Turf comes in to just whack this down. So let's go to the next uh, video. Only women have a cervix. Uh, Keir Starmer, your Labour leader, asked yesterday on the Andrew Marsh show, is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? To which he replied, it is something that shouldn't be said. It is not right. Do you agree? I'm not sure that reducing the debate and discussion in this area to, to slogans and is choice it a slogan, of language only in that women way. have a cervix? Is that a slogan or is that a statement of biological fact? I'm not sure it advances the debate and I'm not and I, I I'm I find it quite troubling sometimes that much of it becomes very Just unpleasant and abusive and toxic in a way where I think there is we, we call should discuss these issues and we should discuss the fact that trans people face unacceptable discrimination we what's that got that. to do with only women have a cervix I'm wearing a t-shirt here a woman woman noun adult human female is it transphobic to say that I think you're entitled to express your opinion is it transphobic um, to have that wear this t-shirt thing uh, I, I, I've, already been called, I've already been called a transphobe at this party conference. I, I don't think um, levelling terms at people um, necessarily advances a wider respectful discussion. Again, massive cop out from that yeah. other Labour MP who's just like, I don't want to talk about this. This is making the conversation <laughs> difficult. That's because it is. It's because your party and your ideology goes into a place that is obviously insane. And that's why even the entire media is just having fun at this. You're like, come on, call them on, ask them about it. Because no one at home can agree to this. Uh, of the people you have lost in the Red Wall, for example, or anywhere else in the country. And uh, yet you're going to keep barreling along that route of insisting that, yes, men can have cervixes, which no, no, no. I, I mean, you think you'd just at least pick a path if you're going to be that pathetic, but politicians are what they are and will be sleazy. I thought we'd go around also some social media bullying that I found. So uh, Twitter listing here. So Ellie says, fantastic to finally meet the future prime minister with a picture of Keir Starmer. And uh, this was listed by Twitter as a funny tweet. <laughs> oh, cool. Anyway, moving on. Let's go to the next one. So this is uh, YouTube, who I was watching the conference on, and they listed uh, the conference as suitable for YouTube kids. So we go to the next link. So when you try and minimize it, it says, mini player is off for made for kids videos. Tap to review. So the conference is specifically made for children. So... Uh, the thing there as well, for people who don't make YouTube videos, that means the person at Labour Conference clicked that. The person uploading the live stream was like, yes, this is for kids. This is essentially a child's product. Our entire <laughs> conference. Nice self-admission, I, mean, I guess. Uh, the extent of political debate is perhaps that of children, but yeah. that's about it. But anyway, getting back to conference. So that's the outside of conference stuff, which, uh, well, come on, we have to look at because it's just so funny. I thought we'd just start uh, enjoying ourselves some more. So this clip we're going to play is about the climate change debate and how that went. Let's enjoy. It's 2021 Can and you? no progressive party, no socialist party should be supporting fossil fuels at all. We need a radical, internationalist, socialist, Green New Deal, not a watered-down motion in favour of delay. That will do nothing for workers. At all. And we will pay for it by taxing the rich. And yes, Rachel Reeves, there is a money tree. It's called the top 1%. So let's tax them. It's a forest. It is a forest. We will tax them and we will save this planet. And it can be done and we will do it. Solidarity, comrades. Solidarity. At least he didn't do a salute. Yeah. Nice uh, of him to dress up for the conference as well. Yeah. Turning up in dungarees like he's ready to plant some turnips with right. his Palestinian lanyard there. This literal child. The thing I want to keep in mind as well, some people might think uh, this is, uh, you know, some rando or something. No, these are delegates. So the local branch sent these people to represent their entire branch, each one of these people. And uh, they, that means they're not just some party member. But there you go. There's the climate change debate. The context on that as well is he's arguing against some... There were some gas workers, steel workers, and nuclear workers who had all their representatives, right? Traditional, like, working mm -hmm. class kind of labor talking points, right? They all came up and said, no, we need a transition. We can't lose our jobs. You know, don't put us out of a job. And uh, you had the rest of them, like that child, being like, no, death to the workers. I'm not giving you jobs. <laughs> we just need uh, to change the planet now by using the money tree. That is the rich. So the right. party that's meant to be for the workers is also for 
putting lots of people out of jobs, probably working class people. Specifically trade unions of gas workers, steel workers and nuclear workers. So, um, Great way to alienate your own support base. Okay. I, I mean, to be fair, they're in fault for joining the Labour Party. Come on, it's bleeding the obvious stuff what this is about now. So, and uh, speaking of what it's about, anti-white. I'm not joking. We have gone through this clip before, but I'm going to enjoy it again. So you can see Andy No posting here. There are too many white men putting their hands up. Video of UK Labour Party leader uh, Mark Ferguson speaking at the party conference. And let's play this clip. I'm going to use well, one second before everyone puts their hands up. I am going to use this opportunity to ask for more speakers. But before anyone puts their hands up, I am aware sitting here, one, it is very difficult to see all of you. There are very bright lights, which you can't really see when you sat down there. And two, the people putting their hands up do not reflect the diversity of the people in this hall, and that is very clear to me. I am afraid, and I'm not speaking from a position of particular strength here, there are too many white men putting their hands up. <laughs> I, I am not anti-white men. Some of my favourite people, my dad's a white man. But... I do not want white men to exclusively dominate this or any other debate at this conference. And following on from my comrade in the chair this morning, I do wish to see the diversity of the hall reflected. I'm not putting anybody on the spot here, but if you want to speak, do not be afraid to put your hand up. We want to hear from you. This is an inclusive conference. Hands up now, please, bearing that in mind. Thank you. All right, that clip we should be seen by everybody in the country because there is so much in there, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, he also assumed their gender as well, which he, is yes, he did. very very bad of him, isn't it? Mm. He but looked it, at them and made an assumption about their gender identity. That could have been a trans woman, my friend. Mm. But anyway, he makes the point, uh, no white men speaking at the podium, and that's because uh, diversity. But we are an inclusive conference, but keep it in mind, white men, you're not welcome. <laughs> it's like, right, okay. Also, the comrades are in the middle of that for, for, for you know... Had an effect, yeah. Yeah, but the white men, the kind of people who literally made the Labour Party back in the days of yore, and uh, yeah, no, they're not welcome. I also loved after that, you could see some footage of like the audience, and you could see like like the white men dotted around, and we're just like, why the hell are we members? And they shouldn't be. <laughs> what the hell are you doing with your life? Yeah, I'm amazed that there were so many in the first place. Surely I mean, they've been pushed out already. It, I mean, talk, we're going to talk about anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. I mean, imagine if you'd say, well, there are too many Jews, and this uh, conference needs to be more diverse because Jews are only some percentage, but there's too many of them speaking. Uh, what would the Jewish members think? What would be the response from the media or the public at large? The correct one of, what the hell is wrong with you? Why, why do you think that's an appropriate thing to say at a national conference about your own members, lest forget? You know, these are your fellow comrades, but they've got the wrong skin tone. And of course, imagine the reverse, Tory party conference, can you imagine them saying, you know, too many black women, black women get out re. And then the media just being like, well, fair enough. No, it's not gonna happen. But uh, speaking of some of the media who did good on this, so I want to give them a shout out. You see GB News, who took that clip and put it up. 230,000 views there. Make people aware of this situation. Share it with your friends. Take it online. Share it to everyone you can. Uh, good for GB News to put that up. If we go to the next one, we have uh, Lawrence Fox, who, who shared this as well. So uh, why is the UK Labour Party so openly racist against white skin people? Don't know. They're just, they're just they are, aren't they? they? They are leftists and therefore hate whitey because whitey is the enemy. And that's how their ideology runs because white man overrepresented. So talking about overrepresentation, let's go to anti-Semitism. This is the thing as well. Like he complains about there being too many white men and then moves on to a debate about anti-Semitism in which he's apologizing for discriminating against Jews. So it's apparently lost on him, the, the weird parallels there. Nothing, no thinking. I mean, his, his mind is literally just like an empty tunnel uh, <laughs> when nothing goes in or out and makes any sense. It's just like, yeah, discrimination against Jews, bad. White men, good. Right, okay. So let's, uh, let's play this next clip in which the audience boo and jeer him for saying we should apologize for being anti-Semites. Let's play. He is a party who have been found to have unlawfully discriminated against and harassed Jews. I should also at conference, 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 we are going to conduct this debate, this serious debate in the way it was intended. I will not accept heckling booing or any other attempts to hassle myself or any other person speaking from this platform now or at any other time for the rest of this session. Amazing. I mean, we're going to have a debate conference on whether anti-Semitism is bad. We've got two options. They're like, boo, shouldn't even debate this. Of course it's good, because those are the people from the old faction, let's say, who have all stuck around. Although they don't seem to be small numbers. They were able to boo and jeer to the point that the chairman mm -hmm. had to literally shout them down 
screeching that, no, we're not going to do that. By the way, we're live streaming that. I mean, that's the best part. These people are so laxed about the behavior. They don't even care that they're being live streamed to the rest of the world. The reason I was laughing was because he was just addressing them as conference and like telling them off. Yeah. And it's just a really weird, weird way of phrasing it, I suppose. Yeah, I like uh, Connor's meme about this, spewing an apology for recorded instance of anti-Semitism. Never has this been more appropriate. Are we the baddies hands? Yeah. <laughs> uh, reference, good reference. Also, um, he then subsequently decided to double down on the anti-white rhetoric after making that statement. So it wasn't just like he made that one about like no more white men, also we shouldn't discriminate against Jews, and then moved on. No, he went back to uh, like, keep in mind, no white men. So that's, uh, there should be a clip here if we can play the next one. We are, we are now looking once again for another round of speakers. I'd like to remind conference what I said earlier about trying to ensure that we reflect the diversity of the hall. Yeah, so that's him. Re-reminding everyone, no white men, but we're discussing whether or not we should discriminate against Jews for being Jews. I, I, so if, if the, does anything really need to be said? What about if a white man is Jewish? Don't know. Is there Imagine any there were a, a, a few there. Are there any base Jewish white men at Labour conference? I don't know what you're doing there, but uh, mm. ask him. I, I want to know the answer. If anyone interviews him, ask the bastard. I, I really want to know. I, I, I can't believe they just get away with this openly and and no one seems to pick up on it. I mean, it's being live streamed. Everyone can see it. Anyway, let's move on. So they had that, and then this uh, horrible man decided he would also, because of course it's not just the white part, it's also the men part. So he went on to complain that there were also too many men yet again. Let's play. I am trying to gender balance this conference, but this debate appears to have a large number of men wishing to speak. Uh, yes, yes, that, this delegate here, thank you. I mean, literal, like, chairman SJW, but then leftism, so quality of outcome doctrine. So I, I don't need to say anything about that. Let's just leave that there. Come on, everyone can see through that. The, the next thing we're going to go through is that the conference then went on to debate a leadership rule change. So previously, if you wanted to become leader, to be candidate, you needed 10% of the MPs in the party to back you. They wanted to change that to 20% because Corbyn they can't do that again. So uh, they had this debate, and the people who didn't want to change it, complains that if they did this, the conference would look too much pale, male, and stale. Let's play this clip. And in 2020, we would have been faced with a very simple choice. Keir Starmer or Keir Starmer. <laughs> now, however we voted in that election, can we really say that the debate would have been stronger had we not heard the voices of Emily Thornberry, Rebecca Long Bailey, or Lisa Nandy? And there's something that those, there's something those three names have in common. They're all women. In fact, can you guess how many women have had 20% of MPs in the last 40 years? Just one. And how many black candidates? Zero. If we vote for card vote 19, our debate will be paler, maler and staler. Our movement will be weaker. Our movement will be weaker if we have white men representing us. Isn't that a, a bit of a condemnation of their own party by their own standards by saying... We never vote for blacks or women. Yeah. I, I mean, you would have thought... He wasn't the only one either. There were multiple speakers who all made that same point. I was like, did none of you have like some cogs in your head that are ticking? And it's just like, hang on. Why do we never vote for women candidates? Why do we never vote for BAME? No, uh, there's nothing going on in there, is it? Just a hamster wheel or something. <laughs> oh, God. So uh, this was the complaint. Again, just some rando. It's just a delegate, after all, to the entire conference. Uh, no, the, the NEC and MP member decided to stand up and support him in that position, as we can see from this tweet. Labour MP uh, Shambana Mahmoud also said that they would not return a pale, male and stale leadership contest. Let's play the next clip. Parliamentary Labour Party, you know, for the first time ever, is over 50% women. And... <laughs> It is the most diverse it has ever been when it comes to black, Asian and ethnic minority members of parliament. Now, look at my face, look at every female member of parliament for the Labour Party, look at every single black, Asian and ethnic minority Labour member of parliament. The idea that we stand quietly by and deliver you a future contest that is pale, male and stale, you're having a laugh. It ain't gonna happen, folks. <laughs> like, yes, I don't want a position in this party either. Good God. So, yeah, they, they agree with that, that they're just going to... I love how she frames it as, like, we, the diversity, are going to be the guardian against white men. Like, us, because we've got brown faces, we're, not gonna, we're never going to vote for white men. Don't you worry, conference. We hate white men too. But 
the obvious point of being like, your current leader's Keir Starmer, and you're the ones who made him there, so it doesn't even make any sense on their own logic, but whatever. Oh, God. So I, I've cut this up again, as I did for day one. Remember, this is only day two. I mean, we got like five more days or whatever the hell is of this. They're really spoiling us, aren't they? Yeah. So uh, there's a full version of day two on the second channel. If you can scroll down to show people the channel name, because I've forgotten how you uh, write it out. But the... Uh, the section in there, there's way more we don't have time to cover on the podcast. I mean, there's some sections in the anti-Semitism part where you've got Jews talking about the fact that people are laughing around them when anti-Semitism came up, or they're being told by a fellow comrade that they need to check up this YouTube channel, which is totally non-biased and is, you know, White Lives 1488. who has got some views on the Holocaust. I'm like, okay, whatever. So it's 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 way worse than I'm making it out to be. And, uh, and enjoy just looking at it and also share it with people because people, I think, need to see how bad they are. I mean, Tories got their problems. Don't get me wrong. We complain about them a lot. Labour Party on another planet of insane. I also wanted to go to the, the last link here, which is just to show the live stream, in case people are wondering where I'm getting this from, which is the, the Labour Party YouTube channel. If you can scroll down on this, one of the things I found interesting is that they have a bunch of dislikes on their own live streams. So you can see the civil war in real time. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, Biden's uh, uh, videos where 100% dislikes, but this one is 50%. So you can see the, the endless civil war there as well. Anyway, that's that. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can catch the full podcast at 1pm every weekday UK time at lotuseaters.com. You can also sign up at lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. Yeah, that's how we keep this whole operation running. And recently we've put up loads of great stuff, such as this interview with legendary comedian Steve Hughes, one of my personal favourite comedians. So it was a real honour to be able to meet him. But what one thing that I didn't expect that he would be such a deep thinker, and this, honestly, this podcast is genuinely like... A meeting of minds in a way. He was right on my wavelength on a bunch of things and helped me actually connect a bunch of dots, but I'm not going to carry on and spoil it. Uh, we also, of course, have lots of interesting articles that have been written, uh, such as this one by Josh about the dumbest country on earth. And for premium, uh, for silver tier subscribers, uh, we also include a link. So it's uh, we have an audio reading of it from a chap called Jonathan, who has a very smooth voice that uh, you will enjoy. And this is great because often I don't have time to read all of the articles we put up because we've put up a lot of regular content. And so this saves me the hassle of having to read it myself. So I really actually am very appreciative of this feature on a personal level. But uh, we also do the contemplations and epochs, which are just interesting podcasts about interesting things. These are regular weekly podcasts. So this one is uh, one of our writers, Josh, who's a very, he's got a master's degree in psychology, talking about theories of intelligence and how they matter. And uh, of course, we've got the epochs where we, myself and Bo, or in this case, it was Josh and Bo, talking about the life of Sir Francis Drake. So that's two solid hours uh, talking about England's most notorious adventurer. Uh, but we've also got lots and lots of other ones. This is number 21. So there's a, a Good back catalogue there. And finally, we have our book clubs. And this is the part that I'm most proud of. Uh, recently, we've done uh, Shooting an Elephant by George Orwell. And, and Reflections on a Ravaged Century by Robert Conquest. Yeah, Robert Conquest is fantastic. Just if you want Western chauvinist historian, he's your man. Anti-socialism. Yes, <laughs> in, in, in all forms. It's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, yeah, and like I said, that's what keeps the podcast running. So if you want to become a member, thank you very much. And we think there's some great stuff you'll enjoy.